Baggage fees can be sneaky, and if you're not careful, they can really add up. When it comes to airline baggage rules, there's a few different ways that you can avoid baggage fees, like flying with an airline that doesn't charge you for baggage, or flying exclusively with one airline and racking up a ton of points and eventually earning a gold or silver status. But I think one of the biggest ways to avoid baggage fees altogether is knowing what they are up front. You see, every airline has their own airline baggage rules, and just because you fly with X airline and they have X rule doesn't mean that that's gonna transfer to Y airline who has Y rule. So it's hard to talk about baggage fees without talking about the different types of baggage that there are. So normally most airlines will break down their luggage into three items. Your personal item, small purse, backpack, or bag that you could put underneath the seat in front of you. The next one is a carry-on item. This is slightly bigger than your personal item. It can be a backpack or a duffel bag. And this bag usually goes in the overhead compartment. And then there's your checked bag. And this is the largest piece of luggage that most airlines will allow. Most of the time it's on wheels. And if you are traveling with a checked bag, this is probably gonna have the majority of your stuff. And this bag is checked in with the ticket agent before you go through security. So each airline breaks down their individual baggage rules according to each one of the bags in these categories, personal item, carry on, and checked. And in all of this, in order to create their baggage rules, they really take into consideration the type of bag you have, meaning whatever category your bag falls into, the size and dimensions of your bag, the weight of your bag, the number of bags you're bringing with you, and also whether you are going on a domestic flight or an international flight. So some airlines will put their fees in combination with the airline ticket. So when you're booking your flight, there'll be different seat and ticket classifications. Some come with one free bag, one free checked bag, and then some are bare bones and don't come with anything, not even a free carry-on. And some airlines will even change the price of baggage depending on where and when you're booking, how far in advance you're adding that luggage between the time you're booking, you're doing it one time while you're booking the ticket, or you've already checked in for your flight. So it really all depends. So all of these things have an influence and can change the price of the baggage fee that you're paying and the type of baggage fee that you might be paying. So to better understand these airline baggage rules so you can avoid baggage fees, let's actually take a look at some of these airlines and their baggage rules so that we can see what they're offering, what their baggage rules actually are, and we can compare a couple of them. I'm gonna be looking into the airline baggage rules of four major airlines, two budget airlines and two full service airlines. Two will be based in the United States and two will be based in Western Europe. I know, this is a lot of information, but don't worry, I got you. So what is the difference between a budget airline and a full service airline? So budget airlines are low cost carriers that usually offer fares at a lower price. They're able to offer these lower prices because you as a passenger are gonna be compromising in other areas. For example, most of these budget airlines don't offer free in-flight entertainment, free snacks and beverages on the plane. Things like transatlantic flights or international flights won't have free blankets or pillows. There's no seat allocation, so you won't get to choose your seat. And sometimes, depending on the city, these budget airlines will fly into smaller airports within the city. So for example, if you're flying with a budget airline into London, you might not be going to Heathrow, you might be flying into Gatwick instead. So some examples of some budget airlines are Southwest Airlines, Spirit Airlines, Ryanair, EasyJet, and Frontier Airlines. Full service airlines, on the other hand, often have a higher price range, but as suggested in the name, the reason why they have this higher price is because they're offering a full service. And mind you, all of this really depends on the actual airline that you're flying with, but with most full service airlines, what you're gonna get is free in-flight snack, non-alcoholic beverage, sometimes you can get a free meal if you're doing an international flight. If you're flying international or transatlantic, you may get a free blanket and pillow. Heck, you might even get some free headphones. And most of the time, you get to choose your seat. So some examples of some full service airlines would be Delta Airlines, American Airlines, British Airways, and Lufthansa. Finding an airline's baggage rules is actually pretty simple. All you really need to do is Google it or go onto that airline website and normally you'll find it under something like baggage fees and rules, baggage and fees, or baggage allowance, something along those lines. Oh, I also wanted to say that if you are based in the United States and you're active military, a lot of these baggage fees don't even apply to you. So check out each airline's individual policy because a lot of airlines will waive baggage fees for the servicemen and women who are active in the military. So let's start with the United States and let's start with the full service airline, Delta Airlines. You probably can't see, but I've got my laptop here with me and we are going to look at it real time and we are just gonna go to the website we're gonna go to Delta and we're gonna figure it out when you go to Delta Airlines and you go to travel info there's a drop down and you're gonna click on baggage so here we are we're on baggage and travel fees Delta has two categories for their baggage rules and baggage fees: check baggage fees and carry-on baggage fees now this is pretty standard for most airlines so let's get into the prices of their baggage and let's find out what's free and what's not free 30 US dollars for the first standard checked bag under 50 pounds plus plus one free carry-on and one personal item. So what I'm gathering from that is that when you book a domestic flight with Delta, you're getting one free carry-on bag 
and one free personal item. Perfect. Now, if I want to check a bag, that's gonna cost me $30. And that check bag has to be 50 pounds, which is 23 kilograms or under. If you wanna check another bag, that second bag also has to be 50 pounds or less, and that's gonna cost you $40. Now, the thing to note with these baggage fees isn't per trip, it's per flight. So if you're buying a round trip ticket and you're paying $30 to go, when you're coming back, you're also paying another $30 for that check bag. Got it. So a lot of airlines have this now, but this is really cool. If you scroll down on this page, there is a section that says calculate baggage estimate. So what you can do is you can calculate and come up with an estimation of how much your baggage fees might be without actually booking a trip. Here's where things get tricky, international flights. Let's take a look. So to really get some clarification on how much it will cost to bring luggage to an international flight using Delta, I'm gonna pretend to book a flight. Let's say I'm going from Atlanta to Europe to Madrid. Round trip, let's use March 7th. Our return date will be March 31st. Quite a long trip. I don't hate it. So the first thing I see when I'm booking a flight for Delta is that there are five different types of seating that I can choose. There's basic, main, comfort plus, premium select, and Delta one. And the type of seat is changing as it goes up. Your luxury and comfort seems to go up as your seating goes up, but also so does the price. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick the basic one right now. Now we have another pop-up, which is giving us a little bit more information than we had before. And it's comparing the basic to the main cabin. And in the basic, it's saying that the seats are not assigned, changes can't be made, so on and so forth. The main cabin is saying that you can select and change your seat at any time. Ah, and at the very bottom it says, check first bag free. So your first checked bag is free. So already that's letting me know that if I choose basic, my checked bag is not gonna be free. If I choose the main cabin, then my first checked bag is gonna be free. So already I know that I'm gonna have to pay for my first checked bag, which is fine. So let's accept the restrictions and continue with basic. All right, so now we're choosing our return flight. I'm gonna pick basic again. Oh, this is actually a pretty good price. I wanna go to Madrid now. I'm getting distracted, aha. So here we go. So on the next page, the review and pay page, this is where I see more of the baggage allowance, the baggage rules that Delta has laid out. If I'm going from Atlanta to Madrid, my personal item is free, which is standard for most airlines. The carry-on is free, but the first checked bag is $75 with a 50 pound limit. The second checked bag is $100. Now, let's try something else. Let's change the destination from Europe to Asia. Let's go from, let's pick a different city. Let's go from Austin to Japan. Tokyo area airports, let's do that one. Now at first glance, that same pop-up screen that we had with Madrid seems to look the same, but if we look a little more closely, we can see that it's not. So this pop-up screen again is popping up to show me the differences between a basic ticket and a main cabin. At the very bottom it says, that your first check bag is free. So right there already I know that with Delta Airlines, if I'm flying an international flight to Japan, possibly other parts of Asia, I'm not really sure, in my ticket, I'm automatically gonna get free personal item, free check bag, and one check bag for free. Now let's take a look at this. If I have a second check bag, it's gonna be $100. All right, so like I said, sometimes the baggage fees aren't as straightforward as you think they are. So that's Delta Airlines. Let's move on to the budget airline, Spirit. So if you don't live in the United States or you haven't traveled much in the United States, Spirit Airlines is a major low cost carrier here in the US. So if you live in Europe or you're from Europe, I like to say Spirit Airlines closest comparison might be Ryanair, except maybe I would take that back and say, I think it's closest comparison is EasyJet. I think that Spirit Airlines is better than Ryanair. Yes, I said it. Like EasyJet and Ryanair, Spirit Airlines here in the US is pretty bare bones. Personally, because I'm so frugal, I tend to fly Spirit. Sometimes Spirit is usually one of the first places I check because I gotta save that moolah. You know what I'm saying? Spirit Airlines baggage information is actually gonna be under customer support. So there's a page on Spirit Airlines called Optional Services, and this is where they break down their airline baggage rules. It says that one personal item is included with your fare. So no matter what fare you have, no matter what fare you pick with Spirit Airlines, everybody gets a free personal item. Spirit has the Spirit Bagatron, which similar to Delta allows you to check the bag prices using their online baggage calculators. Spirit spits out a table and it displays all of the bag prices. Spirit has a membership club called the Savers Club and I think, I don't know how much it is, but I think you pay a monthly fee, get cheaper rates on 
luggage. So Spirit Airlines is one of those airlines that I was talking about in the beginning that changes their price depending on when you're purchasing and where you purchase. So you see how the price has jumped? If you're on spirit.com booking your flight and you know you want to carry on bag, book it then and there. So the important thing to remember here about Spirit Airlines is that it all depends. If you know you want that cheap ticket with Spirit Airlines, you know you want to carry on bag, you know you want to check bag, go ahead and add it to your ticket while you're booking because that's going to give you the cheapest rate possible. International flights, I think, I could be mistaken, but I think with Spirit Airlines, the price is the same. So when we're strictly talking about baggage and we're comparing Delta Airlines, a full service airline with Spirit Airlines, a budget airlines with baggage, we can see that all in all, Spirit's probably gonna be cheaper, but it's more bare bones. Delta's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it's more comfortable, but it's more flat rate. Let's move on to our European airlines and let's start with the full service airline, British Airways. So British Airways is gonna be pretty similar to Delta in that the baggage fees are primarily going to depend on the cabin class that you're in. British Airways, their website also has that nifty tool that Delta and Spirit does where you can see how much your baggage is going to cost before you actually book a flight. Let's say we're going from New York City to London. So the first thing I see is that there is a travel class and there's a drop down underneath that. So it seems like there are a couple of different cabins that you can choose from. Under that drop down, you've got economy with no checked bag, economy with checked bag, premium economy, business slash club, and then first class. If you're flying from New York to London Heathrow, you get one free personal item with a weight limit of 23 kilograms, 51 pounds, one carry-on with a weight limit of 23 kilograms and 51 pounds, economy with no check bag, your first bag is gonna cost you $65 online, $75 at the airport, and you get a max of 23 kilograms, 51 pounds. You do get an extra pound with British Airway in comparison to Delta. So if you're choosing economy with no check bag, that means you get a free personal item and a free carry-on bag. If you do wanna check a bag, then um, check bag is gonna be $65, and then your second bag is $90, your third bag and up is gonna be $170. It seems to me like it's pretty straightforward with British Airways. So I do wanna see if there's any change is in British Airways if we're going domestically. Okay, I think it's still the same. All right, let's move on to our final airline, budget airline, Norwegian Airlines. So Norwegian is a tricky one. If you go under prepare for your flight, you'll see baggage allowance and charges. You wanna click on that. So when I lived in Europe, I flew Norwegian a lot. So I'm pretty familiar with their baggage rules and their policies. I'm so familiar that if you watch this video right here, I go on a tiny rant about how I was charged $65 in baggage fees. So you wanna know what airline that was? it was Norwegian. So unfortunately, in January of 2021, Norwegian decided that they were gonna end all of their flights to the United States, so they no longer fly to the US, which suck because they have the cheapest transatlantic flights. But unfortunately, we had to kiss that goodbye. The Norwegian Airlines, similar to a lot of airlines, is one of those airlines that tends to create packages for their seating, which include baggage and meals. Norwegian has broken down their ticket types into three separate categories. You have your low fare, which gives you one free personal item, which goes you know under your seat, and that has a weight of 10 kilograms, which is roughly about 22 pounds. Then you have your low fare plus, which gives you one free personal item and one free carry-on. But those two items combined weight cannot exceed 10 kilograms. Then you have your flex ticket, which gives you one free personal item, one free carry-on bag, and the both of them together cannot weigh over 15 kilograms, which is approximately 30, 33 pounds. You can add additional baggage if you need to. This is something I used to do a lot. The crux of really all of this is to say that really, sometimes it depends on the ticket agent that you get. While airlines tend to have these pretty strict baggage rules, they sometimes don't always follow them. And this is exactly how I got caught with Norwegian. I used to fly Norwegian a lot, going between Europe and the US. Every time I would go to check in for my flight, it would always weigh my carry-on bag only, until that one time that man stuck to that rule and weighed both my personal item and my carry-on together. And then when that happens, you really have to sit down and decide to pick and choose your battles. And I've never seen them to really stick and adhere to that policy, but it is a policy that they have. So your best bet is just to be prepared for all of it and make contingency plans if you need to. So if you're flying with Norwegian, what you wanna make sure is that you know how much your bags weigh, because that's how they get you. That's how 
they got me and that might be how they get you. You want to make sure you're reading that fine print. You know how much your personal item and your carry-on bag weigh and you combine them. I am a huge, huge fan of digital luggage scales, especially when I travel around Europe because they tend to really enforce weight limits a little bit more than the US does. When I travel around in general, and especially when I'm traveling to Europe, I tend to always travel with my digital luggage scale. So as you can see, sometimes baggage rules just aren't as straightforward as we want them to be. It all depends on your airline, your type of bag, and your destination. What's most important about avoiding baggage fees is that you take the time to do your own research and to see what your airline says. If you don't know this information, then you can't avoid the baggage fees, no matter how hard you try. If there's a certain flight that you're looking at booking, make sure you know that airline's baggage rules and regulations so that when you book that flight, you have all the information up front and you're not bamboozled. And now that you know how to avoid some of these baggage fees, I would say another thing that you can do to avoid baggage fees, simply to travel with a carry-on only. Now you need to figure out the best way to pack your bag. So check out this video.